So I got asked the other day what the difference between a full floater and a C-clip axle was. So I figured I'd just talk about this real quick. Why do people put one tons in their uh, wheeling rigs and ditch the C-clip or, you know, put a C-clip eliminators in them? So here we have a Dana 70. And this is a full floater, which means that the hub out here actually contains the bearings. See, there's bearing there, and there's also a bearing on the inside. So all of the weight of the vehicle rides on these bearings and the tire bolts on here. So the axle itself, the axle itself is not taking any of the strain of the vehicle. It's all going right here on these hubs. And then the axle itself just does the turning. So here we have the Dana 70 axle and the Dana 35 axle. You know, at first glance, they look kind of the same. But this one, the full floater, goes in the tube, into the diff, like that, and it bolts on. So if this breaks, you take these eight bolts out, slide that sucker out, get the piece out, and you slide another one in. You're good. Now with the C-clip axle, the difference is that the bearing is pressed into the tube. As you can see, we got a bearing here, just one tiny little itty bitty bearing and a seal. And all of the weight of the vehicle, of the axle, rides on this one little bearing. Now, the difference is that the weight of that rides directly on this shaft. Let's see, ew! This is a clean spot here. This is where the uh, bearing rides. So, imagine the bearing sits here and you got your tire on right here. So all the weight of the vehicle is being pushed here and here. So this is actually being twisted. If you can imagine that, this is the C-clip right here inside the diff. So as you're putting weight in it, weight in it, the tube is getting pushed down and pushed down and it actually starts to bend just a little bit. Now that's why they came up with trusses is to keep the axle from bending and distorting. So when you're out there and you got 40 inch tires or 37s or you know even down to 31s on this little itty bitty axle and you're banging on stuff and running into stuff where your tires moving and coming to a complete stop all that force is going on to here distorting the axle and the tube and that's what causes these to break off and that's why you get people to say oh c-clip axles are junk well i mean they're not junk you're just not I mean, you're abusing it in a way that it wasn't designed to be abused, right? So if you want to do that, you need you need this. This is what this is for. So you can hammer down that skinny pedal and run straight into a rock and hopefully nothing snaps. I mean, these axles still snap too. but So that's why these break. And you see some videos where you get uh, a lot of like the Yukon, the 4340 chromoly axles. You see where they, they won't uh, be true. They'll sit there and wobble like this. It was because that hit, instead of it just, you know, snapping the tip off, the metal's so much harder that it actually bends it. Now, that's another thing that's different is, like, you got, uh, you know, your standard, you know, spring steel type high uh, carbon content steel, even with, you know, stuff like this. But when you move into, like, a 4340 chrome molly, it's denser. Like, yeah, if you took a... Uh, you ever had seen like a, a carbide end mill or a carbide cut or something, you drop that sucker on the ground, it's going to shatter. It's dense and it's strong, but it can't take those shock loads. So that's why you see a lot of these breaking off here or warping or even breaking this uh, tip off here. Now they do make other types of metal like 300M, which is substantially stronger than 4340, but they also make like a 1541H manganese, which is about as strong as Chrome Ollie 4340, but it, it's got a little bit more give into it. It's a little more springy. So when you come down on something, the axle doesn't shatter. It bends and deforms and then retains its shape to a, to a degree. So that's basically the difference. Uh, now this other thing is that with the C-clips, you got to pull the cover off. See the C-clip sits here. You got to pull the cover off and get the axle out. That style, all you got to do is unbolt it and pull it out. Uh, sometimes you can stick a magnet down in there and pull off the broken spot, broken piece. Usually these axles are, uh, usually they break here at the splines because these are so much thicker. This is a 1.4 inch shaft and the 35 is a 1.2, 1.12, 1.15, something like that. So what happens is 
these splines actually get tweaked and they usually pop off so I've seen uh, some guys where they just carry a long magnet like you get at O'Reilly's or something stick that sucker down in the tube in the diff and you can usually fish that thing out if not then you know you still got to pull the cover but at least you're not having to pull the pen out and which can be a pain so that's the difference not really a whole lot more to talk about but that's why you got guys that are like oh dn 35s are junk well it's i mean back in 95 they didn't design this for this this was cutting edge technology back then this was a luxury vehicle I mean, a lot of guys weren't alive back in 95, but you got to remember that this, with the the compass and the door open signal and the washer fluid low stuff, that was cutting edge technology back then. That was a big deal. So they didn't design this for that particular application. You know, that wasn't really what they had in mind at that time. So that's why you get uh, guys that upgrade to it like at 8.8 .8 or... You know something something bigger dana 44 is because this bearing journal is larger and the shaft diameter is larger but you still run into the same problem with the axle tube that actually flexes so there that's where the trusses come in so a lot of different uh schools of thought on this but i mean this is the this, this is the dana 35 i've been wheeling on this for two years now welded you know i did an awesome job wasted on ipa when i did this you can see it got porosity and you know the uh, the pinions all chewed up, but uh, this just this did just fine. I wheeled like this for you know a while, and so now I'm just in the position where I'm going to upgrade because I want to do a little bit stupider stuff with it. So Dana 35 is fine for a lot of things, but it's not fine for a lot of things. So you got to kind of pick and choose what you are using it for.